hello YouTube this this is an article by an American thinker it's, it's it's more of a soft news piece but it touches upon things that are I think are important to realize right so um, it's by Andrea Whitberg and it says Portland openly segregates citizens by race and sexuality okay so um, let's just begin and we'll talk about it seems lately as if Everything that's old is new again. 102 years after the Spanish influenza, we're back to uh, having a national pandemic. 66 years after the Supreme Court's 90, 1954 decision, Brown versus Board of Education, we're back to having government sanctioned segregation, this time in Portland. Brown is America's seminal uh, civil rights case in the United States. Plessy versus Ferguson. Uh, um, Okay, um, the Supreme Court held that making separate but theoretically equal facilities for different races satisfied the 13th and 14th Amendment. You know, the, the thing that's really bothersome, again, when when it was uh, separate but equal, blacks thrived, you know. It's it's sad what's happened in the black household. It's it's absolutely like, Oh, it's, it's just something that's again it's everything starts with the black community and works the way off work okay so if something happens to the black community it will eventually happen to others around them and most likely it'll be the white <laughs> you know that's currently happening anyway um, we concluded that in the field of public education the doctrine of separate but equal has no place separate education facilities are inherently unequal okay this is what they claim but all right so this is just the backstory. Although the decision was limited to public education, the underlying idea is that so profound that it applies to a matter of law, not just all government-run facilities. Again, we've moved so far, far left, right? Like absolutely insane. Where, again, um, things like minor hiring, it was originally meant for for blacks, right? And then the feminists, the communists, the feminists are communists, right? That's what they are. They're just not bright enough to understand it. They they decide to hijack it like I think two or three years later if it was passed in like sixty six or something along those lines by sixty nine, I think the feminists took ha minority hiring and, and did it for themselves. So what you have is uh is for the past like fifty years of feminism is that women have taken over the workplace, you know, and this got worse under the Obama administration where they went to a lot of uh, media outlets and demanded demanded that they um they hire minorities meaning women women and blacks specifically. Not Asians, not Indians, <laughs> women and blacks specifically. Okay, um, and I, I think a lot of these companies hired these people and shoved them to HR, where they actually did more damage. You know, they weren't qualified for anything else but HR. Anyway, <clears throat> left us at the University of Virginia, dictating who is and who isn't allowed in the multicultural center. I found this really disgusting. I just uh, play a few seconds of this. Excuse me, if y'all didn't know, this is the MSC. And frankly, there's just too many white people in here, and this is a space for people of color. So just be really cognizant of the space. Anyway, we see what's going on here, right? So this is where it gets really like funny in my mind, like you know, the the constant changing of language. So if you're wondering what happens to college students who who embrace this impulse to segregate, some of them may be working for municipal uh, government in Portland, as it as as. As is true in other Democratic runs, Portland has a sizable homeless population. While other cities are moving homeless in the hotel rooms or other indoor facilities to protect the population by extension, the rest of the city uh, from the pandemic, Portland has a different approach. It's setting up a three outdoor tent cities. Portland will open uh, three organized camps for homeless people during the crisis, an unprecedented, an unprecedented step for the city. Okay. Uh, there's more goodies. There's, there's more goodness in this. Um, what's generally unprecedented about the move, though, is that Portland is officially segregating the ten cities by race and sexual orientation. One site will be priority to the LGBTQ people, one for the people of color. <laughs> Anyone who wants service specific to the sites will be allowed to camp there. The third site will be for everyone with emphasis on older people. <laughs> uh, you can't make these things up, but it gets a little better, by the way. Um, anyway, still one uh, one doesn't need a journalist to explain the segregation in plus you can tell that Holmes from college graduates just by paying attention to the words that uh, Joe and the Hardesty of Portland uh, commissioner uses when describing the city's homeless population. The reality is a stay-at-home order leaves those without homes to return to behind 
and we can't let it happen. While the house community can take a refuge, notice the language, but it's going to get a more explained language one second. And homes and the bulk of their needs are met during this time. Our houseless neighbors <laughs> have lost <laughs> the many uh, resources. Okay, only in academia do you see sensitivities so delicate that the phrase homeless is no longer permissible. Instead, house community and houseless neighbors. This is the same mentality that's taken ac an accurate uh, phrase, illegal alien, morphed into undocumented immigrant. And that's what I hate, the constant, the constant shifting of language because it's never enough. And people who use their words five years ago, if they have it on camera, will be labeled racist, will be labeled sexist. And that's wrong. It's awful. Those people are evil. Okay? Um, so, now, I, I feel for the homeless population. You know, I, I, I went to school with a few Okay, I went to school and I know I know I know at least one person who was homeless and it broke my heart and he was smarter than me, he was better than me, he had better grades than me. He just had a tougher life than me, you know. And I saw him on the on the street when I was, I was driving my car and um I was stunned, you know. Imagine I spent a few seconds making sure it's him. It's been like a few years and I, and he said uh he has uh, he had like a um a sign that's that says he has no family and um i remember in my high school his his uh, dad died and his sister died and he was just him and his mom and i think his mom was a little bit older and i haven't seen or heard from him from years you know and i knew him in college a little bit and uh i, I just i just i lost contact and one day i saw him and uh, i saw that um that uh the sign and he was homeless and you know it, it, it breaks my heart it, it, it does break my heart these, these homeless people they deserve help but we can't give help if if the if the if we're constantly importing people in here we don't have the we don't have the funds we don't have the funds everything is finite you know you don't have nothing's infinite you know so um anyway this, it's, it's some things are funny here just the changing language in portland is just it's just not one of these cities that are ripe for destruction and they'll get there by their own doing and then blame everybody else. Or they'll just uh, run away from uh, the liberal cities and run to middle America. You know, but... Um, yeah, that's it. I thought it was an interesting article. It, it just shows um, the thinking of certain people during this time. Now, they want segregation again. And in the school system, kids naturally segregate, right? This is what I've noticed. It's like the the, the 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 blacks tend to usually go into a corner. I kid you not. And again, the, the behaviors are unruly. It's something that I've picked up on. I've noticed, and it's just, and everybody kind of knows the teachers. They just don't say anything. Kind of, once in a while, you see a little stare at each other. They know who's doing it and where it's coming from, but we try not to talk about it, you know. Um, and you see the Spanish kids. You disagree with Spanish kids are actually because they come from two parent homes. They're very stable. You know they do they they have a they have a usually a good religious background of nursing Spanish kids and they usually majority of them are well behaved while a majority of the black kids aren't you know if there's a fight in the cafeteria it's, it's it's always even in high school what I've noticed is that the there's a lot of gang violence but usually what you see is the blacks on blacks so they usually fight each other. 95% of the time that's what you see in, in, in schools they say the self segregate even during fights <laughs> you know it's, it's it's both sad and funny at the same time but it's things I've noticed you know things that are just it's glaring alright guys I hope you liked I hope I didn't depress anybody I hope some things are funny I hope some things are okay I hope you enjoyed so please share save subscribe thumbs up I was trying to do better again I, I am on Twitter and I am on uh, like uh, Gab and things like that on Parler I just like posting like 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 uh, poop posts you know just making fun of things and i haven't linked anything to my youtube along this line just nah, we'll see what we see how it goes I mean, i'll try to link it later on after i have a few more subscribers and i'll think about that stuff and go from there anyway be safe do what's right do not give the gov government uh, ammunition <laughs> to extend this uh the stay at home stuff okay just you know be safe it's the most important thing all right guys take care